Hey peeps, it's Triple L, and now it's time to talk My Hero Academia Chapter 113 after the exam. Apologies for the delay on this particular video. I am a bit unwell, so I am going to keep this brief. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So this chapter, it marks the conclusion of the provisional license exam and the arc effectively. It showed us, or it started off with Inasa and Toroki's attack on the big boss gang orca who by the way got a lot of really nicely drawn panels i'm so happy that the author brought back this character and is having fun drawing him like it's actually very interesting seeing this giant whale anyway we had that segment and the conclusion of that and then we had the segment with Toro, uh, not Todoroki, uh D deku and everyone else coming in to suppress the villains seeing ojiro and seeing suyu's new quirk that was definitely a standout moment for this chapter camouflage i actually really like it i do want to see where she takes it in the future but overall it was a very simple chapter it's a wrap-up chapter uh the characters just kind of cleaned up house just did everything they had to and in the process we had a bit of character development for todoroki and inasa and then characterization for gang orca and Todoroki making a comment about Deku that even to the bitter end, Deku is going to be there. Which, you know, I don't know where we're going to take it, given the conclusion of the chapter. I don't know where Todoroki's and Deku's relationship will develop from here. Regardless, um, the if there's anything to talk about this chapter, it's the pass rate. Um, in this exam, or this part of the exam, 89 students passed, 11 students failed, we know Inasa failed, and we know Todoroki failed. Because if Inasa failed, it only makes sense that Todoroki did eat as well. And then we know that Mineta passed, we know that Momo passed, and we know that Deku passed. Now, there were people who were saying that 89 is a really high number for a pass for this exam, but you really have to think about it, right? This exam started off with over a thousand people, right? So already, that's a really low pass rate. The second part of the exam though, why would it have such a high pass rate? Well, it makes sense if you consider what exactly was being tested. In the first part of the exam, you know, you were dealing with the unknown element. People had to figure out other people's quirks. They had to adapt to combat situations to try and be able to deal with getting through. The first part of the exam was definitely the hardest part because it relied on knowledge that you can't really acquire in school it's knowledge that's acquired through being in these situations so in that regard the uh, ua class effectively has an advantage and we saw how that all went we saw that the people who didn't have effective combat quirks were still able to give support and then they got help from the rest of their classmates that was a big part of that exam but then when you went into the second exam we got to see that people knew what to do like, people knew exactly what to do in procedures where there's a lot of rubble and they have to set up safety zones. And it makes sense. As a hero, one thing that they can teach you is proper procedure when you're in a disaster area. It makes sense that there is such a high pass rate for that particular part of the exam. Because if you consider that people that get through the first part, they, they have to be competent to some degree to be able to deal with those kind of battle situations. And then, as we saw in that second part of the exam with the rescuing, people knew what to do. They were already briefed on rescue procedures. So at that point, the exam is just there to test and make sure that you understand the fundamental responsibilities of a hero, and that is to properly save uh, civilians. So for me, personally, it makes sense that that part of the exam had such a high pass rate. Because when you already have 100 competent people, Chances are those hundred competent people, if they've been taught well, they know and they can regurgitate proper rescuing procedures. And especially when you consider that even the class 1A who doesn't have that kind of training, they're all relatively competent that they can figure out what to do after seeing what everyone else is doing. So yeah, you know, I'm actually pretty okay with the 89 pass rate. I do wonder who the 11 students who failed are, but uh, you know, I, it might just be Todoroki who failed from class 1A. And really, what does that mean for the future? Well, at the end of the day, this is only a provisional license. The license only makes it so, or at least if I recall correctly, that license makes it so that if the kids get in any trouble, they can act as heroes and not get penalized for it. So, you know, I'm pretty okay with that. I'm pretty okay with Todoroki being the odd one out because, you know, 
it adds a bit more shame to the whole situation and it does show that Todoroki still has room to grow and now his mistakes have potentially well it hasn't really hampered him like he'll probably get it on the second time around but it might make things a bit difficult for him to maneuver in the future other things that I thought were interesting in the chapter was that Bakugo's group was a group that had the last two civilians and it's just funny that Bakugo did not get to see any action but uh Inadvertently, he got through and he, I, I'm pretty sure he passed because the people that were judging him seemed to have been pretty uh, impressed by his ability to be really annoyed. Anyway, guys, um, that's really all I can say about this chapter. I think what's going to be interesting is just the ramifications that come from this chapter. So next week, maybe I'll talk more. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, let me know what you thought of the chapter. Till next time, I hope you have a great day.